it wasn't as bad as it is to watch. It was interesting to dissect it as it was going on. <laughs> but you're right. The Bears could have won that game. I mean, maybe not should have, but they could have won that game. Turnovers in the fourth quarter doomed them, though. Beyond the turnovers, and that's a huge part and can't eliminate that, what's the biggest reason the Bears lost that game? I think the biggest reason they lost that game is because they couldn't stop the run. They couldn't stop Jonathan Taylor. Because when you look at what the Colts were attempting to do or just what they're able to do, it's very limited. They can throw deep balls, and they can turn around and hand it off to Jonathan Taylor. And he did some spectacular things, Jonathan Taylor, uh, particularly that touchdown run where he just had everybody guessing where his next step was going to be. But because you didn't sell out, to contain Jonathan Taylor, you allowed that one to get away from you. We have seen DeAndre Swift in his two previous stops behind two terrific offensive lines in that of the Lions and that of the Eagles be really comfortable and successful. I don't know right. if I don't know if you talk to him, but you can understand what it must be like to have the ball secured and then immediately be under siege in the way that he is. Are they asking him to do too much with the lack of quality in the run blocking? Yeah, well, it's it's really complicated. We didn't get a chance to sit down with DeAndre, but just knowing how his game works, he is he is elusive. He is you know quick twitch. If he can find that lane, he can explode and go do what he did in Detroit, and ultimately what he did with the Eagles. And you expected that, I think. Part of the issue, and this is why I think Ryan Pace locally for you guys is getting a little bit of heat, is that he built this team outside in. And you'd look at the talent. This is both defensive skill position players and offensive skill position players. Before the season started, I was saying this this group is as good as there is on the offense and defensive side of the ball is this from a skill position standpoint. But the problem offensively is that the offensive line is not even close to being where they need to be in order to protect the young quarterback and also make it easy for their for their run game. So you're right. John Dre Swift is thinking before he can think, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, he, It's almost like he's, he's anticipating contact. Therefore, whatever the play design is, it never comes to fruition. And as a running back, that's frustrating. I had a couple of seasons – where we had a beat-up offensive line, and it was young kids who just didn't really know the schematics of what they needed to do. And it was, I mean, it was it was hard. Like when you're averaging a yard and a half per carry or two yards per carry, it's easy to get frustrated. And what happens is with a new coordinator, you just say, all right, we can't do that. Let's just throw the ball. And that's why Caleb you know, threw for throw over 350 yards. But it just felt like there never was a balance. There never was a threat from the run game, and that makes it really easy to defend for, in this case, the Colts. Yeah, I'm, now I'm just thinking in my head the the irony then that when they did get the ball at the five-yard line late in the second quarter, fifth drive of the game, which had some really nice moments on it, but then they couldn't get the ball into the end zone. So who was more indictable on that? Is it the offensive line or was it the, the play calling? I think, well, to me, because I remember saying this on the broadcast, you, you're you're down there tight, and you don't let Caleb throw the ball one time. <laughs> right. It was, right. And it's and it's not even that. If 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 you want to, if you're gonna run, move him, right, and and take him out of the pocket and make the defense have to work as opposed to just being static and mano a mano, my best against your best. You know, we're gonna beat you type of thing. It's old school football. New like the the new era of of the game mandates that you have tricks in, in the in the puzzle and it just felt very predictable down there on the goal line and I hated the fourth down call absolutely hated the fourth down call because when you run an option and you don't protect the edge as is Jason McCourty uh, my my co-analyst pointed out there's there was no edge there's no tight end on the edge it was an open edge so they were they had you outflanked they had you outnumbered it was dead before the ball was snapped and so they as much as I want to say, oh, you got to just block it better. You got to, you know, you're, you know, drive that guy three yards into the end zone. Like that's what they'd say in my era. I have to say that was a bad play call because it just it never had a chance from jump. And what we're finding out is that he did have an opportunity to get out of it. He could right. have he could have kill killed it. And didn't, and then he said, "Well, you know, we've got to get the we, we don't we want to make sure we have the play run." 
So right. to me, but guys, but that, guys, he's 22 years old. You know what I mean? He's 22 years old. He's never been in these type of situations. The game is much faster, and you're putting a lot on his plate. Now, if if that's what you want to do, you want him to learn the hard way, fantastic. But when you're trying to win a football game, you have to put him in the best position to not have to think. You know what I mean? And so I think about – like young court, uh, coaches, head coaches in the in the NFL, and play callers in the NFL, and eventually, like forget the development of the player. It's about getting W's because that one it protects the the culture, it protects your job, yeah. and it, it it ultimately gets like everything moving in one direction. The perfect example is Dave Canales down in in, in Carolina, as you guys I'm sure saw. Bryce Young got benched. Uh-huh. And it and it wasn't because they don't it's not that they want, don't want to develop them or they're, they're done with them. They want to get rid of them. He has to win football games. When you're a new head coach, you have to win. Otherwise, you never outrun that negativity that, that creates that's created by so many bad seasons. And so, Dave did the right thing for himself and for his team. And we saw what Andy Dalton did. Now, I'm not saying that the Bears need to do that, but I'm saying the Bears need to put Caleb Williams in a position to find success. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What about his part? Like, what? Give us your and that, you know, three games, and and obviously this is the pro- probably the one that you were hyper focused on. The good, the bad from Caleb Williams so far in this in this small sample in, in your eyes. I tell you, yeah, the good is that the dude has got an elite arm, and we 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 mentioned this on that deep ball, one of those deep balls to Dunze. Like he he weights the ball properly. You know, sometimes a lot of of quarterbacks, they just they throw one one style, right? It's like oh, this thing's coming out of my hand, it's coming hot, right? <laughs> Regardless of what kind of throw I need to throw. Jay Cutler. Um, but he, <laughs> right, exactly. Right, you guys remember, yeah. right? But 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 Caleb can weight it correctly. Like if it needs to be in there, there's a couple we saw on tape leading into the game where he just drills one in um, uh, to DJ Moore, and it's like, oh man, that is beautiful. Tight window, linebacker converging, it gets through. There's others where he just has to kind of float it up and you know let the receiver run under it. He does those. Things. But the one thing that, that I did notice is that the timing just feels off. And you played it. You played it in the clip with me coming in when Jason and I were talking about the, the thirteen personnel, three tight end, you know, dagger route that was on that side. It's just the timing isn't quite right. Qu- isn't quite right. Maybe I could be an old schooler and say, oh, it's because you don't play in the preseason type of thing. But it just, it's just going to take some time. Like I'm not, I'm not down on what they're trying to do. I just feel like. It just it's gonna take some time for that to start to feel natural, right? It's the it's the Malcolm Gladwell ten thousand rep thing, right? The outlier thing. It, it just it's it's gotta it's just gonna take some time for them. Is he just like when you talk? And you're right. Like timing is tough for for any quarterback. But it is like what does he have to do? Does he just not trusting what he sees? Is it is well, he leaving stuff no, on the well, table? Like a little more yeah, specific. It's a, it's a little bit of that because I think he gets rushed. It's been, you know, with the with the way that the offensive line has not been protecting him, um, he's starting – like, you see him spin. Like, you see this all the time. I'm sure you guys as Bear fans, you should watch this every week, the last three weeks. As soon as there's a little bit of pressure in front of him or on his edges, he just starts to spin. You know what I mean? So he tries to spin out of, mm. of trouble instead of, like, hanging for another second more or just climbing the pocket forward so that your eyes can stay downfield – and it's hard to do that when these bodies are just falling around your legs. And as a result, he just gets quick. You know what I mean? So he, instead of this play needs one more quarter of a second to develop, and then I let it go, he's letting the ball go too soon. And, again, it's, it, that's feel, that's reps. Mm-hmm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come. Sure, sure. But it's just, it's just, it's just it's hard, right? Huh. You're, I think the Bears are lucky, you know, from an outside perspective because your defense is so damn good. And you're going to be in games, um, as you have been every single game, simply because teams are not going to score a ton of points on you. And so that gives you a chance to play into the fourth quarter. And, again, I mentioned that at the, at the top of this interview, it was the mistakes in the fourth quarter, right? You get a touchdown, you're, 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 you go for two, which I think was the right decision, because if you, if, you, if you make it, you only need a field goal. If you miss it, you still have to score a touchdown anyways, right? It just, you, but then you, you, then you get a fumble. Uh, or then you get an interception, and basically the game is over. So it's just it's just those moments where you you have a chance and you let it slip away. 
As a national broadcaster, you have the privilege of being able to have a private meeting with the coaches leading up to right. the week of one of these games. What was on your notepad when you sat down with Matt Eberflus? What were your observations from that conversation, and how much yep. of that of that conversation bore out in one way or another in the game itself? Yeah, first of all, he came in in this sweet double-breasted suit. I was like, man, you look the part, bro. <laughs> you got, his hair is all nice. That's our like, guy. Yeah, that's, that's our guy. That's not the problem, though. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not how you look, but you know, yep, you know that's what we him. say, Dan Mark. Hey, man, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play yeah. good, you get paid good. Just for the right? job you want. Uh, you don't take a timeout to figure out if you need a two-point conversion or not. <laughs> oh, no. no. Like, I, I, think, I think that the, the big takeaway – um, that we wanted to get from him is is the aggression and how how aggressive are you are you going to be and I think we saw we saw it in defense we saw it leading up to the game on the defensive side of the ball you you saw Montez Sweat finally you know get a sack and you saw this aggressiveness in the secondary like you, you saw all of that but we didn't really see it offensively and we know there was a change at right guard with uh, Nate Davis out, so Matt Pryor starts, and he's a natural tackle, so it's a, it's a little bit odd. And, you know, it, you thought it would just be, let's just do a block right side, just get push, make it old school three yards in a cloud of dust. And I think the diversity in the running back use was something that was, was, was evident, right? Roshan Johnson finally got some carries, and Khalil Herbert, Herbert got some carries. But th the problem was the production wasn't there. And – and so while we expected to see aggressiveness in the run game and in the pass game offensively, it just it didn't happen until it got until it got behind the sticks or got behind the scoreboard. And that made it very difficult to fulfill like what I think the game plan was going in. All right, Tiki, let me ask you as a player now. Your team starts one and two. Team came out of training camp thinking it was pretty good. They had the whole yeah. hard knocks thing. There was a very high confidence level in everything that was going on. After the loss to the Texans, there were some murmurs. There were some questions about you know, maybe they're not as good as they thought they were. Right. When, when you show up in the building for this week, you personally, do you want a kick in the ass or do you want, do you want a hug? And do you want somebody telling you, look, let's take some positives out of this. Everything's going to be okay. Or do you need a head coach saying, no, -uh, this isn't good enough and people might lose yeah. jobs around here? No, I actually, no, that's the Antonio Pierce way. Cause that, cause those guys laid down and he said it after the game, AP, my former teammate with the, with the Raiders now. Um, but I think, I think with the bears, it's more of the, the hyper-focused, you you guys are good. You're gonna make mistakes. You're there's some there's, there's we have a young quarterback, but you you have to focus on the details. You have to focus on the on the littlest things, the littlest adjustments, the littlest um, moments in a game, because that's what's going to make a difference between winning and losing. And I think the beauty for this this Bears team is that even though you've lost two games, there they were one score games. Mm -hmm. You know, so and. The Texans are a good team, even though they got their ass kicked by the Minnesota Vikings. But you know what I mean? They're a good team. And so, like, you are in games as it, with a young quarterback and a, and a developing offense with a not-so-great offensive line. But you're in every single game. So if you just do something, you know, what they always say 1%, but it's really not 1%. you got to do something like 20% better. You know, get 20% better. Forget that 1% better nonsense. Get 20% better. And that's on you individually, and then we'll be, we'll be okay as a team. So it's not the screaming and yelling because they're not, they're not horrendous. You know what I mean? But it is the – you guys got to focus in. I'm not giving you a hug. I'm not saying we're good. I'm saying focus in, right? Show me that you care enough to do the little things better. You know, the it everything you said makes sense, including the fact that the Bears have been close and they, they've got a defense that can win. Unfortunately, in this town, style points count because we've right. seen – We've seen the defense thing work. We've seen the special teams thing work. We've never seen, or most of us have never really seen the offense thing work. So I think there's like this, like everybody's fans are conflicted. Media is conflicted. Maybe even the coaching staff. That's why he threw the ball 50 plus times in the game because yeah. they want to win it a certain way, just like everybody else, Tiki. Well, I think it's, I think it's less about winning in a certain way. I think it's winning. Necess how, how you necessarily have to win. And, and uh, in a just, sustainable way, too, uh, that is well, relative to well, this version of the NFL. Well, you're right. You're right in the bigger picture. 
But I think on a game day, it's like, screw it. Let's just, if we're, if we can effective this, we can affect this game by throwing it 40 times. We got to throw it 40 times. And you know, we did a game a week ago, just, just as a quick and aside with the, with the Baltimore Ravens and the Las Vegas Raiders. And on paper, in your mind, like you can just see, oh, this is the Ravens. Ravens should run away with this game. The, the Raiders could not run the football. They, they couldn't, and they were getting, you know, run away from a little bit. They were down by 13 in the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden, you just saw, like, you guys know this guy well. You see, you see Luke Getze oh. saying, you know what? <laughs> but you know what he did? He mm-hmm. stopped running the ball. He said, you know, we're just going to throw it. We're going to throw it to Devontae Adams. We're going to throw it to uh, the Brock Bowers. We're going to push the ball down the field, and one of three things are going to happen. A negative incompletion, a positive pass interference, or Devontae Adams is going to catch the damn thing. And you know what? They came back and won that game because it wasn't like, oh, let's fit into a mold. That's how we craft this thing in the preseason or pregame. You know, it's like, dude, just win the game. Find a way to win a football game, and I think that's what Shane Waldron was trying to do. Just find a way to win the football game. Unfortunately, you get that that sack fumble by uh, uh, Laitu, Latu, mm-hmm. and and it just it just everything's done from that point on. The irony's breaking my brain. They fired Getzy because he wouldn't adjust. Right. They right. fired him, and they hired this guy. I, I can't. But he adjusted more well, than his predecessor, well, well, Matt Nagy. Oh, hold on, hold on. Here's 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 the difference. Maybe. Here's the difference, maybe. When Luke Getze's head coach is now Antonio Pierce. And Antonio Pierce, you don't mess with at all. Because he is he is aggressive, he is he is mean, and when he screams at you, you respond. <laughs> it's kind of like how Tom Coughlin coached him and me. You know what I mean? And so when we talked to uh, AP before that game against the Raiders-Ravens games, he said, I want them to throw the ball down. And I was like, AP, is it is it the play call or is it Gardner not doing it? And he just kind of stared at me. <laughs> he was just like, what do you think? And well, I was like, all right, I got it. I'm <laughs> thinking about so old man. So, oh. right, so in the fourth quarter when they started throwing it, I was like, I know exactly what happened. <laughs> all I know is our guy's got a sweet-ass double-breasted suit. So if, <laughs> if, they, if, if, if they happen to need an extra in the chorus of guys and dolls, he's perfect for him. Tiki Barber, thanks so much for joining us today. This is great.